I wasn't one of those people who always knew what they want. I didn't grow up dreaming of working in tech. In fact, for a long time, I wasn't even sure if I belonged in this field. I studied electronics. Coding just happened to me. And to be honest, I struggled a lot. I'd write code, break things, get stuck, give up, and then try again. But somewhere in that process, that struggle started into something else. Curiosity, satisfaction, and even joy. And eventually, I fell in love with it. Hi, I'm Amanpreet Singh. Building and designing systems is what I do day to day. And over the past 10 years, I've built various large scale systems at OYO, Mentor Graphics, Airtel Africa, and now Google. But this isn't about big companies or fancy titles. It's about everything I've learned along the way. The things college never prepared me for. And that's why I'm here at Vedam as a mentor. Welcome to Vedam Amanpreet. The students are really looking forward to learning from your journey as a mentor at Vedam. But what makes your journey even more interesting is that you didn't even come from a computer science background. Back in your NSIT days, did you ever imagine that this is where you would end up? And what was it that pulled you into tech, especially when it wasn't a part of the original plan? To be honest, I never imagined anything. I just thought I'll give the entrance exam, I'll join a good college, be with like-minded people and I'll explore and we'll see where it ends. My degree was in electronics and communication. I spent most of that time on academics and exploring some projects related to electronics. But at that time, I wasn't sure whether I'll end up with an electronics job or my career would be in software engineering. I explored a lot of things and I kind of eliminated them one by one. Software was something I never didn't like. I had limited exposure of coding subjects in my school and a couple of subjects in college. They were kind of intriguing and I always like problem solving. Gradually, I developed interest and I landed in Google. So you've worked across radically different domains. Algorithmic trading at Futures First, ED at Mentors Graphics, Scalable Consumer Systems at OYO and Airtel, and now Google Search Systems. What gave you the confidence to keep shifting? Whenever I joined a company, whatever project I was working on, uh, it was the kind of the best use of my abilities at that particular point of time. But as and when you deliver projects and you grow, your knowledge grows, you feel that you have excelled in certain stuff and this is the part maybe where you can improve. So having discussions with my peers and getting to know that I can excel here and I, there's an opportunity over here. Based on those things, I took some decisions and that's something that was responsible for holistic learning and uh, I'll say a good successful career till now. Was there any moment when you realized my college education didn't prepare for this at all? What was missing? <laughs> the day you join corporate, you'll feel <laughs> your college didn't prepare you for this kind of life. College is good, like my college was good in the sense that I was taught how to work hard. And since the peers were super intelligent, I couldn't just slack off and get good marks, good ranks. So that part was definitely important. But the practical aspect of career is way different from the theoretical aspects of college where you maybe start studying two weeks before the exams and get good marks and be happy. Career is something totally different and I realized it on the first day and and have been realizing it ever since and I feel a, a better curriculum or something which could have been more practical would have been a better use of my four years. If you were designing the perfect curriculum for today's tech world, what's one thing you would remove and one thing you would double down on? And what do you think of Vedam's curriculum? Yeah, so one thing that I'll remove too much focus on theoretical, theoretical subjects. At my time also, like uh, this was 10-15 years back, the curriculum was outdated. Uh, even the computer science curriculum focused mainly on electronic subjects. It was never at par with the industry, especially now when the industry has changed so much. So I'll say the curriculum should be updated. It should focus mostly on what's relevant today. Like back in the day, there was a boom in software applications which users were using and today everyone knows like they talk about AI and how you could be more productive. So being in touch with the reality, being in touch with the industry, that would be super helpful. And 
the curriculum should be designed in a way that it should continuously evolve to the changing needs of today you have seen both the sides the traditional college setup and now this ai first model at vedam why did you choose to mentor here so uh, i was kind of lost when i was 18 and still kind of lost when i was 22 i explored a lot of things i could have explored them maybe faster i could have reached the conclusion maybe quicker and been a bit better uh, when i left college and i want that students like me who wanted to work hard who want to excel in their careers but maybe they are kind of shy and like i had a lot of support through my mentors but i had to think twice or thrice before reaching out to them and as a result i couldn't get the best out of them out of their knowledge i want to be a mentor who's available who's easily accessible so that students don't have to think twice and i just have to guide them i know students all the students at vedam would be really capable it's just a bit of guidance that they would need and they will feel more confident and be the best version of themselves students vedam don't just attend classes they build 50 plus projects get mentored one on one and solve real problems from day one what changes when students learn this way it changes everything when you build projects you learn a lot you learn about problem solving you learn about collaboration and you learn about ownership i was fortunate to work on a couple of projects in my college life but i feel there could have been more i could have been even better at collaboration and especially at ownership where you do not think that okay this is not my problem this is a project problem and i own the project you do whatever it takes to deliver it and working hands on on projects would be a really big advantage for the students who will enter the industry 4 years later you know today students aren't scared of studying they are scared of being replaced by ai if you were 17 today what would you do differently i would be nervous for sure i would talk to people who are in the industry and try to search as much as possible that what exactly is going to change and then realize nobody knows to be honest what exactly will change the only thing people know and can foresee is that we have to be productive we have to be super productive we don't have to compete with ai ai is a tool for example if i go 10 20 30 50 years back if let's say i am good at maths and calculators come i don't have to worry i have to use it and maybe spend my time doing the actual problem solving so ai should be thought of as a tool to spend time focusing on the most important things like we do in our day to day projects initial i was also skeptical that okay what's ai what will it do will it, will i have a job two years down the line and to be honest i still don't know but what i do know is that ai can be my friend and can be my enemy i have to be flexible and i have to adapt the more productive i'll be the more i'll be required by the companies the projects i'll work on and the best asset i'll be so it's not about you using ai versus not using ai you have to be productive if you use ai i'm sure you will be productive but it's better that you use it and found, find out for yourself what's one skill students ignore but is far more valuable than any programming language the skill i'll say is flexibility sometimes i have seen students stick to a certain language a certain framework and then they think oh i know c++ i don't know java or i don't know python or whatever we have seen things change in the last 5 7 years and i am sure with the boom of ai the things will change even rapidly so one has to be flexible think of the high level and low level problems and these things like frameworks languages these are all tools to help you complete your task the aim should be understanding the problem and the solution you are delivering these things will keep on changing and the person who just thinks of these things as means to achieve the goal will succeed what makes a student stand out in an interview and what kind of resume does make a student set apart from the crowd so the most important thing in an interview is the ability to think clearly and this ability can be enhanced the more projects you build the more structured your thinking gets the way you think clearly that helps you build better projects and maybe more projects as well 
that's where vedam's curriculums come into picture over a period of 4 years the students will be building more than 50 plus projects where they will be building clones of apps like netflix hotstar and even work on training the ai models and using ai tools even working on ml pipelines one can only guess how confident a student will feel when they'll step out of the college and enter the real world what's one thing you believed in early in your career that you completely disagree with today i think that will be perfection i always thought that one needs to be perfect to get into big tech perfection is something you can't just attain you can try to chase it you can get better you can keep evolving and you can be the best versions of yourself but that's the myth that was busted when i joined google and i have been working with a very very brilliant peer group over the last 3 years they are great but they are far from perfect and we are learning each and every day to get better what's one tool one book and one habit you recommend to every computer science student yeah so back in the day the tool would have been stack overflow but today with the influx of ai tools coming every day <laughs> I can list more than one. Uh, for example, in coding, I use Gemini. You can use other alternatives such as Codex. Me being in Google, so Gemini is integrated in each of the tools in Gmail, in Google Docs, and especially in the ID we use that is Cider. We use it for repetitive works, for creating tests, even for the PR reviews. And if I have to work on a totally new code base. about which i might not be having much of an idea i use in uh, gemini in that as well we can ask point black questions we can also ask questions like okay what does this file do what does this method do can i refactor it so these tools have been really helpful apart from that notebook lm is one other tool which i find of great use you can share a youtube link any doc or any url in general and you can convert that into speech you can also ask questions for example if there is a video of let's say one hour and i don't have enough time i can just share the url with notebook lm and ask the questions it will provide me the right answers we can also convert the entire text into podcast and for people who drive to office like me a 20 minute podcast summarizes a lot of things which i ad- otherwise i would have missed so yeah ai tools are coming and this answer might not be relevant 2 years from now but right now it is from book's point of view i think system design by alex hu is one of the most wonderful books i have read it has two volumes one and two it is really really thorough and it's very good for the beginners as well it understands each and it explains each and everything in great detail and the habit i would say it's not to jump right into the problem i struggled a lot with this whenever a question was thrown at me i would jump straight into the problem but we should take a step back we should think holistically okay i'll try to solve this but will it impact some other component can i build a solution which can be fixing some other problems as well so yeah uh, thinking from a high level and then working on the problem rather than just pro- working on the problem straight away that would be like a habit i will recommend to the students what's your message to all the engineering aspirants out there watching you and trying to put an end to the chaos that they are currently in it's okay to not have all the answers nobody has it when they are 17 or 18 i for sure didn't you don't need to have a great degree or a college or a grand plan in front of you to be successful what you do need however is to take small steps even when things get messy even when you feel overwhelmed just keep taking small steps and make progress you don't need to have all the clarity before making the start it will come as and when you progress keep exploring keep building i look forward to seeing you all in our one on one sessions all the best